Hello. So what do you want to talk about today? Mozart. My kitty's waking up from his nap. I thought we would have a little conversation about having a YouTube channel. Is it a good idea? Is it something that you want to do for fun? Is it something that you want to do in order to have it as a replacement for your regular nine to five income, make a business out of it? Because if it's going to be run like a business, there's going to be a lot of different things you need to do versus just having it as a hobby or something that you just do occasionally. When I started this YouTube channel, I did not intend to have it become a business. Now that doesn't mean that's not in the back of my mind. That's something that I would like to do, but it is one of those things where you have to decide how much time you want to spend on it. If you just want to do random things, and just throw them up on YouTube whenever you feel like it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I don't think you need to post videos every single day. I don't think you need to even post videos every single week, but it is better to be consistent. So weekly or bi-weekly, I think is a better idea. That just keeps your audience engaged. And if you have things that you wanna talk about, my YouTube channel has not been around for that long. And of course, I started off doing some fashion stuff. And that doesn't mean I'm not going to do that in the future because I think that stuff is just kind of fun. How you can have a nice wardrobe but with thrifted things and make it work for you and not have to spend a lot of money on your clothes if you're buying them retail. And that's something that, of course, I want to talk about more in the future. And as most of you know, I am working on getting my visa in order to move to Spain and live there for a while and have some new adventures and do some fun things. Now, I don't want to be one of those idiots that is out there on the streets and expecting people to not come into my line of vision if I'm recording something. I think that's just rude. I've seen some people talk about that. And me personally, I think that's rude that if you're out there filming for your YouTube channel, or if it's any other uh, social media platform that you might be on and you expect people to, they're walking on the sidewalk and you expect them to stop so you can finish doing what you're doing. I don't think that's correct. That's just me personally. If you think that's fine, hey, that's your opinion, whatever. I am just never going to be that person that does something like that because I would not be happy if somebody asked me, hey, could you just stand off to the side for five minutes while I finish this video clip? Like, uh, hell no. Um, this is a public place. I'm going to go do whatever I want. And <laughs> that's just kind of how I think about it. But do I want to chronicle what happens when I'm in Spain and share that with you and show you where I'm going, what I'm doing, looking at, you know, different um, towns and exploring along the coastline and traveling and just experiencing all of those fun, fabulous things. Yes, but I'm trying to figure out a way to be able to do that a little bit more discreetly, meaning if I do certain things, it's going to be at a time when there's other people not out on the street as much or shorter clips or just going into areas where there's not a whole lot of people running around. So maybe going on to, you know, some of those, um, uh, back roads and exploring some of those different areas, things like that. Cause you can still get a feel and a taste for, you know, what's going on without having your, uh, camera recording, or if you're going to do it on your phone and have that just, you know, right out there in front of everybody else. I just think there's too much of that already. I think it's overkill. And I think, um, people that live in those areas, and this is all around the world that have that influx of tourists, and then they have everybody and their brother and their sister on their cell phone and doing all of this stuff. It gets old after a while. 
I will never be comfortable with that. I think that um, it's really made a mess of things. And this is why people have lost patience. This is why people have shorter attention spans. This is why people get pissed off so easily. It's because of this me, 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 and go, 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 and all of this social media stuff. Can you use social media as a good platform for things? Yes. I don't care what anybody thinks. I still do not consider YouTube a social media platform in the same fashion that Facebook or TikTok or X would be because there's a lot of long form content on YouTube that can be used for educational purposes and teaching people things. I mean, how the hell else do you think I got all this great information about Spain? Yes, there's a lot of really good blogs on it, but when I can watch a video and it's like short, um, I guess they can still consider that long form, but you know, 15 to 20 minutes and I can take notes and write down a whole bunch of things. And then they have really good links to those pieces of information of what I might want to use. That's to me very good. And that's educational. And I think a lot of us that are Gen Xers, even baby boomers, there's, there's a good amount of us out there that have YouTube channels. I'm a Gen Xer, but I think we need more. I think we need more of that wisdom and that experience and sharing with people across the world what it was actually like growing up in a time where we did not have computers and we did not have cell phones and we did not have social media. Yes, because we have these platforms and I'm going to just be talking about YouTube in particular here, we can share these things with people. Whereas years ago, you could not do that. If you wanted to, what did you do? You wrote a book or it was uh, on TV and somebody was being interviewed. Now, nobody would have done that back then because we were living in that time. But when I think back to what it was like when I was growing up as a kid, and all of the craziness of high school and all the bullying that went on. I mean, yeah, that stuff goes on these days, but I think that some of these people in the younger generation think that that stuff didn't happen back then or things were really, really different and they really weren't. I mean, there was bullying. I was bullied when I was in high school and the difference was we didn't have people bringing guns and knives into school. We didn't have to worry about that kind of stuff. And we dealt with things face to face. It wasn't some smart ass sitting on their computer, you know, uh, in, in their basement and rattling off idiotic or mean comments to people, things that they would never have the balls to say to somebody's face unless they wanted to get slapped or, you know, reprimanded. And I'm just being honest here. I would never say something rude to somebody online, much less to their face. Even if I disagreed with them, I'm still going to have respect for that other person. I'm just not going to be an asshole about it. And there's a lot of assholes running around that do stupid stuff like that. I've even seen on Max Velocity, he's uh, this young guy that has a YouTube channel that does weather stuff. And he's absolutely amazing. He's got a great channel. And I was reading comments this morning about all of the stuff that's going to be coming through, you know, Florida and Georgia and the Carolinas with the uh, tropical storm Debbie that is possibly turning into a hurricane or whatever. And people just putting rude comments on there. And I'm like, why? Like, that doesn't even make any sense. Are these people that unhappy with their lives or... Or what? What is the deal? I don't understand it. I don't understand like what is going on with these people. And it was some. It's it, it's like things. I guarantee you, they wouldn't say it to his face. I mean, people wouldn't say it to my face. Yeah, they'll say it. You know, typing on a keyboard. Well, anybody can do that. You know, woohoo! I guess if that makes you feel better, then you go for it. But I still think it's a good idea to have a YouTube channel. And even if you don't think you have anything to share, you can still just sit in front of the camera and talk to people, one human being to another, and your experiences and things that you've gone through 
or insights you might have because believe it or not, it is going to help somebody else out there. No matter how minute you might think that detail is of what you know in any given area, that's still going to help somebody else. Okay, there's a lot of content that I have seen over the years on YouTube that has helped me and has educated me on things. Investing, for example, okay, we didn't have that capability back then. Yeah, there's pros and cons to what we have now for technology versus what we had back then, which wasn't a whole lot of anything. There's pros and cons to everything. I think there was more pros to things back then versus now in relation to that fact of how people have just, um, their attention spans have gotten so much shorter. And I I will see like, there's like really good content out there on YouTube on some of these channels, but they overproduce that video so much. They put a three minute long intro or they have this loud, obnoxious music coming in at the beginning. And um, it just makes me dis makes me distracted. I want somebody to just sit down in front of the camera or wherever it is or whatever it is they're doing and just get straight to the point, start having the conversation. I don't want the long intro and the fancy flashcards and putting up all the words on the screen and then putting some sound effect every time they do that. Like, what the hell is that? I, I just, I, I don't understand it. Now, if other people enjoy it, hey, that's totally cool. It's something I am not going to do on this channel. I, I, number one, I don't want to learn how to do fancy ass editing on videos because I think that it's useless. And um, there's a lot of people out there that are doing videos that are unedited where they're just doing their thing and they are blowing up with subscribers and views. And I'm not saying I'm doing that to get that. I'm just saying that if somebody tells you otherwise that, oh my God, you have to learn how to do all of this editing and it's gonna take you weeks to just do one video, that's like the dumbest damn thing I've ever heard, okay? Like how can you do a 30 minute video and you're just gonna tell me it took you 40 hours to do that? Clearly you're doing something wrong at that point, okay? That to me is a complete waste of time. That just does not even make sense logically, okay? To do something like that. I get if you're doing fashion content that's not like mine, that you try on outfits and things like that, which I don't do, that that's going to take some more editing because you've got to film something, you've got to do a change and then of clothing, and then you've got to put all that together in an edited and produced video. I get that. But when you're just having conversations with people or trying to teach people things, you know, if you want to throw up um, some kind of verbiage so that person can stop the video and write that down or a one, two, three step process. There's people that I follow on YouTube that do that and they do it slow enough where it's not like boom and it's gone and you're like, wait, what the hell just happened? And then you have to like go backwards and rewatch it like five times in order to just like make a note of what they did, what they showed. And some of it is just too fast and we need to slow it down and we need to allow our brains to absorb what is going on. So I do this YouTube channel because I just want to share things with people, things that I've done, things that I've learned, things that I'm interested in, and have conversations with people in the comments. That's what I want from my viewers. I want us to have conversations about these things, about what are you doing in your life? Do you have any good ideas? of things that you're working on or where you're going. What are you doing for your investing? What are you doing for your getting near to retirement or wanting to retire early or move to another country or fashion or saving money and being frugal, reading books? What are you reading? Anything. That's what this is about because we are not all in the same room together, right? We are spread across this beautiful planet. And yes, this beautiful planet is a hot mess right now. And I think that a lot of people are trying to remedy that by pushing back against the agenda. And um, we have to stand strong in our beliefs and our values. And we have to want 
freedom for people, freedom to choose, freedom to think, freedom to believe what they want and not have other people try and censor us and tell us that we can't do this and we can't do that and we have to think a certain way because that all that is is slavery, okay? We don't want that. We want freedom. I want to be able to just pick up and go to Spain, okay? That's what I'm doing. I don't want anybody telling me I can't do that. Like, what the hell, right? So when I do these videos on YouTube, I'm not doing it to get a 1,000 views. I mean, people, I think, sometimes have a misconception of, what people make on YouTube and they think, well, if you've got, you know, 10,000 subscribers, you're making a thousand dollars a month. That is no, you need to have the views. Okay. And it needs to be where the people aren't just clicking off your video after two seconds. You want to have those views because if you're a monetized channel and you've got ads, that's where you pick up a lot of that revenue from. That's that organic revenue on YouTube. If you're doing sponsorships, then that's something coming from an outside source. And that's great. If you have like a buy me a coffee page like I do, that is coming from somebody that watched your channel that wanted to buy you a coffee or buy you a cocktail if you've got it set up that way. And that is cool too. But am I making a lot of money off of my YouTube channel? No. Would I like to have more subscribers on my channel? Yes, I think I'm a little over 12,000 right now. But I'm not going to force that and say, well, I need to do this and I need to do that and I need to fall in line with what all these other people are doing because they're getting more views or they're doing this you know, huge production of their video. No, I find the channels that I follow where they're just sitting in front of the camera and they're having the conversation. I find that those videos get a lot of views and I think that's great. I'm looking for more of that realistic content. I'm not looking for all of that, that fluff that's put into it. And I sure as hell I'm not interested in AI generated content. I think it's crap. And it's interesting that there's these free things like a quill bot and there's some other ones out there where you can take text from something and you can plug it in and then have it tell you how much of it is AI generated and it's really accurate. And I can tell because I am a writer. Okay. I can look at something and read it and say, yeah, that just sounds to me like it was partially AI generated because it just doesn't sound like it's coming from that person from, their thoughts and their feelings at the time when they actually wrote whatever it is that they wrote. There's a huge difference there. And I've taken some of the stuff that I've written, I've plugged it in and it comes back as hundred percent human written. It doesn't come back with anything AI. Why? Because it wasn't AI. It was done years ago. So it knows the difference. I don't want to see that on YouTube videos either. Or somebody that sounds like a damn robot when they're talking to me. Okay. It's bad enough with all the weird shit we got going on. I want to keep it real and I want to be as authentic as possible with things. But I think it's a great idea to have a YouTube channel and to just have conversations and things. And because we do have this capability now, which is again, a pro of being in this day and age that we can reach far and wide with our thoughts and our if we have problems and sh not, I'm not saying put all your junk out there for everybody to, Oh my God, you know, it's poor me and this and that, or this happened and that happened. I'm not saying that the oversharing part of it, but to talk about certain things that people have gone through, like my no friends video that I did that went viral. That was just me speaking to other people saying, Hey, it's okay. I'm okay with it. I still don't have friends. I'm still okay with it. I love my life and what I do. And yes, I live in the villages right now in Florida and I go to all the free concerts and I always end up talking with people and having good conversations. Or if I stop in at a shop somewhere when I'm out touring around doing stuff, there's just no way you can tell me that there's something wrong with the person if they don't have any friends. And yes, I did get shitty comments on my video from that from people. And you know that they're just 
not happy with their situation, which is why they say shitty things to other people. And of course, they're hiding behind a screen when they say, it. ooh, that really makes you, you know, and the men that were doing it was really, really funny. Anyway, I digress. But do I think you should start a YouTube channel if you've been uh, thinking about it? Yes, do it. Just do it. Do it any way you want it. If you want to overproduce the hell out of that thing and spend hours or, you know, pay somebody to edit and produce that video, then you do you. You do whatever you want to do, okay? I'm probably not going to watch it if it's overproduced, but that's just me. I just like the real authentic people that are out there that are just chatting about life and showing things in reality and how they really, really are and not something that's fluffed up and something that is not real. You want to see real because we've already got enough artificial crap going on in this world. I want to see real, real life, real conversations. Okay. So anyway, that's just my two cents on what I think about having a YouTube channel. I just think it's fun. I am perfectly comfortable in front of a camera, as you all know, but that's just me. I do watch some videos of people that are super uncomfortable in front of a camera, and that's just something that they have to work on. I remember being in high school, and I refused to get up in front of class and read like a book report. I took a drop in a grade for that because... I would get heckled all the time because they were mean when we were in high school and I just didn't want to do it. But when I went to college and I had to do that, it was a completely different ball game. Why? Because we were adults at that point and everybody was paying to go there. People actually wanted and listened to, you know, what I had to say and I excelled at it. And then of course my current, job that I have that I've been doing for 12 years where I train people online and I have to work with a bunch of people. I've always been remote doing this, but that has also helped me be more comfortable in front of people. But I've always been comfortable talking to strangers and, and doing all of that sort of stuff. I've never been intimidated by that. I am not an easily intimidated person. That's just my personality. I can be intimidating from what others have told me, but I'm not easily intimidated. And that's just who I am. We are all our own unique individuals. And I think we have a lot of good things that we can share out there in this world. And just let it rip, you guys. And if you want to start off by not putting your face in front of the camera, but just talking and maybe showing things, you know, at a slow enough pace online where somebody can actually see it on the screen before it just zooms on past you, maybe that's what you do. Just keep it real. Be, be yourself. That's what we love about people is when they're themselves. And of course, when they're not being jerks, okay? Because nobody likes a jerk. At least I know I don't. Anyway, I have a couple of books I want to share now. I can't remember if I showed you um, this other one, but I got these from the library. And I do like her, her books. It's Laura Childs. And she's got the, she's got the Cackleberry Club um, mysteries and uh, what's the other one that she does? Um, oh, the scrapbooking mysteries. Those are good. But these are the tea shop mysteries that take place in Charleston. And I really, really like them. And I just fell off the wagon with reading them for years. So now I'm like, I don't know, like 14 books behind. Crazy. So this one is Sweet Tea Revenge. And then the other one I got that is right after it is the Steeped in Evil. But they're just fun. And I lived in that area for a little bit. So it's kind of nice when they talk about certain things. I'm like, yeah, I remember that neighborhood or I remember that cemetery or whatever. But that's just what I'm reading right now because most of my other books that I kept that um, are like my Agatha Christie's and stuff, those are all packed up and I don't want to open up that box and start you know, going through those. Those are eventually going to come with me when I go to Europe. I'm just not taking them in my suitcase because um, that would be too much right now. So anyway... Um, my cat Mozart is sleeping behind me here. My other one is back in the other room sleeping. And we're getting ready for some uh, some weather, I guess, coming in here with uh, with Debbie. 
uh, moving on in. So we'll see what happens with that. But wherever you guys are at, if you're in the path of the storm, stay safe, be prepared. And uh, let's enjoy this beautiful world that we have around us. Let's keep it positive. Let's by all means keep it real, okay? And use common sense. Question everything. Make your own decisions. And let's just do it. All right, you guys. Love you all. Have a great rest of your day or evening, wherever you're at in the world. And we will talk soon. Take care. Bye.